Good morning, or uh, good afternoon. I'm sorry, a little bit different this time around. A little bit of a change of pace. I'm going to make sure to click on the right thing. And there we are. Hello, first period. What's up, guys? How are you guys? I'm pretty excited. Um, Mike sounded good. That's always sweet. But so this Sunday, just a little bit of background. Why are we doing it at noon on a Tuesday? Well, I'll let you know. Um, Sunday, it really wasn't to do with, uh, what's it called? Relegation, in all honesty. Like, I have a nice little cute deal set up with Hindu Man that uh, I just don't cast on the first day, first games on Sundays so that I can get my, 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 my nonsense out. But unfortunately, I'm already... It's like 9.30. I don't wake up early for first period. It's like 9.30. I'm waking up. I go to the bathroom, and I it's like flooded. And I'm like, oh, no. And so I call the guy. I live in an apartment complex like everybody else down here in Georgia. Either you have a mansion or an apartment complex. No in between. Another reason I hate suburban Georgia. But anyway, I call the maintenance man. And homie shows up. He's like... He's like some, some like 19 year old dude, probably younger, probably like, probably some like high school kid, right? Walks in and he's got like a bag of tools that he probably doesn't know how to use and a hammer in his hand. And I'm just like, what's up, dude? My, my bathroom is flooded. I don't know if it's the sink or the toilet or the tub. I, there was water and I called you guys and he's just like. I ain't no plumber. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, where's the maintenance guy? Like, it's a Sunday. It's, a, it's 9 a.m. on a Sunday. Maintenance guy's not actually here. I'm the backup maintenance guy. I'm like, oh, my God. So they call him. It takes him an hour to get here. He shows up. He fixes my thing. By the time it's fixed, it's 1 in the afternoon, or it's almost 1. So I have to go to a high-res anyway. What a terrible situation. I was not a fan. I was not a fan. I was not a fan. But anyway, that's... That's why we're doing it here on Tuesday. And in all honesty, now we get to talk about both regions' relegations. At the time, on Sunday, only Europe was done. And we had to sort of wait for North America, because that's what was broadcasting on North uh, on, on Sunday. So with all that, we've got relegation teams, which teams are in the SPL now. Um, we have Season 4 to talk about. Since we actually got to see Season 4. Everybody and their mom out there talking about how season four is good or bad or how it's balanced around Clash or their favorite Wario character can't play or this, that, or a third when we've only seen shitters play the game. I do not care. I do not care what happens in your ranked games. Even if you're a pro, I don't care what happens in your ranked games. Although I care a little bit more about what happens in your ranked games. What happens in my... Go I'm gold now. Shouts to me. What happens in your gold games, your, your platinum games, your diamond games? I don't really care. Because it's not the same level of organized competition. And at the end of the day... That's really what matters because we're going to see the casuals pro like copy what the pros are going to do anyway. And it's whatever. It, it just doesn't bother me. It's just not a concern to me. Ditch console, please. You're fucking dumb. Lit XO. Although, I mean, with a name like that, <laughs> you're probably on the stratosphere right now. In any event, let's talk relegations. Fails is in here talking more than ever. Because he's a pro leaguer now. Elevate. His team Elevate goes ahead. I deleted the page. That's so annoying. His uh, his team Elevate makes it into the pro league, which is pretty sweet. Novus Orsa, which is going to be, uh, that's, uh, what's his name? That's Shadow Nightmare and Friends. Still Frostyak. It's actually really funny. Frostyak barked back at me the other day, which I, which I, I found hilarious. Where is Frosty? Oh, it's Frosty X underscore. So, if you guys missed last week's episode, basically what happened was I was talking a lot about these rosters going into um, going into uh, relegations. And one of the big things that I said was that when it comes down to Frosty X and Shadow Nightmare, I think Shadow Nightmare is a much better mid laner than we've actually been able to see. And I partially blame that on Frosty Egg. And I said that Frosty Egg might actually be a better player. Because Frosty Egg is insanely inconsistent. When he's good, he's very, very good. And we saw that happen. When he's bad, he's just not there. And he's just not a strong player. 
This relegation process, Shadow Nightmare brought out the Zeus like they always do when they're in trouble, and Frosty had came through and won some games. It was it was it was fun to watch. I still maintain that I think these players would be better off in different directions. Maybe Frosty Act wouldn't be, but Shadow Nightmare probably would be. In any event, I said that, and I went, at, I went, I went on about it at length. I talked about it for a large period of time, and uh, Frosty Act didn't really like that. In fact, Frosty Act came back and hit me up on the uh, Frosty Act hit me up on the um, on the Twitter, and after after he said, "Hey, it's not time for a divorce yet, am I right?" And February 11th, as they qualified. You know, this is this is the qualification, and you know, there's a whole bunch of other uh, whole bunch of other events going on here that include Frosty and Shadow Nightmare together. And he highlighted them in red so that we could see how long they've been together. I responded with the full image. This is the exact same image. The only editing on this image is the red bracket for me to show. The gauntlet, they came in first, but the gauntlet is the worst of the worst. This is literally people that aren't good enough to be in the Pro League. So they're the best of the worst. And season one EU regular season when they had Funball and Zelia at his peak. Also shouts to my man Half Devil. They came in first. And the team saw the mid-invitational, which we covered last week. Everything else has been a barely qualified or a fifth place spot. I just... It's not enough for me. It's not enough for me. But I did find this funny that Frosty Act decided to clap back at me and uh, I used the exact same image to just smoke him. So, at the end of the day, I, uh, congratulations to Nova Sorsa. I think that it is a good idea that they... I think it is a good thing that they made it into the league. Um, I, I think Ducky is a strong player. The jury's still out on Flurry Q. But Frezzy, Frosty Act, Shadow Nightmare... We'll see what happens with these guys. I'll keep an eye on them. I don't expect them to be number one at all. I actually did not expect them to make it into the uh, high risk new man. I did not expect them to make it through relegation, if I'm completely honest with you. Hindu man posted our uh, predictions the other day. This was my prediction. Uh, so this is not Tom. This is... Shit, who is this? Uh, F. Dot, Anatoly, Hindu Man, Ryan, Taco. Oh, right, right, right. So, yeah, yeah. So, this is Taco. Um, Taco is here. Uh, she had the first column, even though T is my T. I'm Tom. I guess I'll lend it out to Taco. So, it's Taco, F. Dot, Anatoly, Hindu Man, and Ryan. That's aggro. Since aggro and Anatoly are both A's, R for Ryan. So, so that's... Uh, where are we? Where are we? I gotta, I gotta find a quick here. So if you're curious, if you're curious who the uh, C four zero six Y, yeah, that's it. If you're curious who the uh, who, who the man there is, it's this guy. Here we go. We'll 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 do this. Agro Agro is my Valentine, by the way. Joe can get out of here. So, th so this is uh, this is who the R is. It's it's Mr. Ryan himself. So, uh, when it comes down to it, in Europe, I figured it was going to be Cy I figured it was going to be Cyclone, Elevate, and New Game Plus. Actually, it's not the fact that I thought New Game Plus was was something super good or, or super strong. I really and truly just thought that uh, the I, I just thought that the other guys weren't going to be as good. I did not have faith in Novus Orsa, to be completely honest with you. A lot of people did. Anatoly, Hindu Man, and Ryan. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze real quick. I hate sneezing. I hate sneezing so much because I never sneeze this once and it's always a big scene. Eesh. Anyway. Anyway. Why is it? Alright, there we go. My mute button wasn't working. I was very confused because I need a lot of mute buttons. Anyway. 
New Game Plus, I didn't really think was was a good squad, in all honesty. But I had them as third because I thought the rest of the I thought the rest of the units just, you know, deserted that Stevie Beefy's team. I didn't really I had more you can see I have them number four. I had more faith in them than I did last minute monsters, who I thought just uh, you know, sorry guys, you're Hestrix and friends, you're just not good enough. And Nova Zorsa, I thought Fred was gonna be detrimental to the squad, in all honesty. I figured they were going to lose one game early and everybody was going to fucking yell at everybody and they would do miserably from that on. That's really and truly what I expected. Because if you guys know behind the scenes, that's what happens with that squad. Shadow Nightmare is going to bark at Frenzy. Frenzy is going to bark at Shadow Nightmare. Frenzy is going to taunt somebody and they get killed for it. Shadow Nightmare is going to yell at him again. And then Frostyak is going to say something and he's just going to continue farming. Like, I just, I did not, I thought, I expected this team to explode. I did not expect this team to do well. And like I said, Last Minute Monsters, they put out a good showing. But I just did not think that that squad would have enough oomph. Taco had them coming into the Pro League, believe it or not. Taco knows these guys from playing EU ranked and really expected them to be very strong. She expected them to surprise a lot of people. I think that um, moving away from their mid laner, Mr. Stefan, I think it was not their choice, but I don't know. Just a problem. In any event, I got two of my, out of my three. Nova Sorcerer did come out and surprise me. They did perform. Um, New Game Plus, unfortunately, Deathian's not going to be in the uh, the Pro League. That's a little rough. Uh, North America, I think, was a little bit different as far as predictions. Everybody knew that Gabe was going to be number one. If you're unfamiliar with who in memory of Gabe is, it's Walrus, Sinoshore, who is a console league player, Heroin, Ionic, and Snoopy. I mean, you look at this roster, and you know these guys are going to be top of the crop. There's really no conversation about that. It's fucking Snoopy and Ionic duo lane. Okay. And then number two, Enemy. I had them as number two. Taco and Agro did not have faith in the black and red. I think So here's my spiel on Enemy. Enemy obviously... Enemy, obviously, was not the strongest team historically. Um, most, or, or in me recent memory. Their travels through the fall split were pretty trash. And for the majority of last year, to be honest with you. Basically, Pandacat had to had to take a leave of absence, right? Pandacat disappears for a while. Then you look at their jungler, Scream, or Verizial, as he's known, right? Verizial looks like a player that goes, all right. With my star player, because Pandacat has been the star player of enemy. Let's let's be honest. He is the star player of enemy. With my star player gone, it's time for me to play some hero ball. And I'm going to be the guy. Everyone's going to look at me. I'm going to be the Thanatos crashing down from the skies. Getting gazillion kills. I'm going to be the dude playing my Susano and crushing the enemy with my fist. And because he's trying so hard to be the guy, it just didn't work out. It unfortunately was not. He's not the carry that Panda Cat was, is. And so when it came down to it, I just did not, I didn't like that spot. Panda Cat comes back and everybody, everybody's Im expecting immediacy. Everybody's like, oh, Panda Cat's going to come in. They're going to win their first game. And I'm like, y'all are fucking dumb. Y'all don't understand team. I want to say sports here, but let's say team dynamics. Y'all don't understand how this stuff actually works. Because, one, if I'm if I'm Verizial, the jungler, I don't just snap out of my thought process right away. I don't just wake up, oh, Panic Head's back, I guess I don't have to be the big guy. And even if you're thinking that, you get into habits. You change your play style. And I think people that haven't played or observed high-level play on a... On a consistent basis, I don't want to say professional because that's implying that those that get paid to watch this stuff are just by default better. But if you have a regular job or if you have outside responsibilities, it's hard to devote the amount of time that other people do to the league. And you can see that in some of our hardcore casual, hardcore super fans. But at the end of the day, being able to snap out of a play style is not simple. And you just don't understand that unless you've played on a high level or observed a game at a high level. And so expecting Panda Cat to come back and that day or that week, the team to snap out of it? Not going to be the case. 
So, Patty Cat comes back, and it's honestly just not enough for the team to succeed in the 2016 year. It's just not going to happen. So now that 2017 is here, they have a lot of time to practice and get it right, and time for Verizio to snap out of it and stop playing hero ball, which he's not good at. He's not the number one player on the team, and that's okay. He's a role-playing jungler, which is odd, but it's okay. DJ Perticus is a role-playing jungler. Weaken is a role-playing jungler. Your jungler, more often than not, is your superstar, but he doesn't always have to be. And that's exciting because it means the teams have different dynamics. Verizio is there to set up what Chaos wants to do. Verizio got most of his kills on the right side of the map because Marauder wasn't going to take them. Now that you have a new solo laner over there, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's not Mackie. I heard that it's not Mackie. Cope to enemy? I don't know. So I, Cope, Cope has had more struggles in the past than he has recently. I don't know if it's Cope to enemy, but we'll see. 09 Kinga says, or Kinge, my bad. Chaos needs a consistent jungler, not an MVP jungler. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Role player. Players and fans have been offended when I call people role players. And it's not a bad I, It's not a bad thing. Everybody has their spot. You can't have five superstars. Even enemy, or excuse me, energy, isn't five superstars. Even energy isn't five superstars. It's just the fact of the matter that energy adapting is the superstar. That's who the guy is. Demi and Melito. Now, energy is unique because everybody on that team is strong. Demi is great. And Melito is great. Raffer is sure fine. No, I'm kidding. Raffer is great. Yamin is great. Yamin and, and, and adapting are the superstars. And Melito makes his plays. Demi makes their plays. But these guys are role players. These guys know that if they go out, because it's not the it's it's not the fact that there's that there's like a limited amount of playmaking capability on the field. It, it's the fact that if everybody tries to be the start, if everybody tries to be the guy, there's nobody setting up, and you need the setup man. So do not be offended when I call you or your favorite player a setup man or a role player, because it's important. Verizio is a role-playing setup man jungler for Chaos, who is super strong. And when Verizio stepped up to be the guy in Pandacat's absence, because Pandacat's the other star on the team, one, that's not a bad thing, but two, it just didn't work out. Verizio has a different skill set. Now that Pandacat is back, the team has had a long time to get Verizio out of that mindset, put Pandacat back in that mindset, practice as a unit, practice as a team. Now... Now, now you're looking at something different. Is enemy going to be the number one team in the world? I don't think so. Is enemy going to be the number one team in North America? I don't think so. Is enemy is enemy going to be a better team than they were last year? Absolutely, absolutely. When it comes down to it, I think that enemy was a joke last year, a fall from grace that you know. Puts Red Bull Sports at, at a disadvantage. They were the ones that sponsored the guy that's kind of literally from outer space. Get it? It's a funny joke. Topical reference. No? My point is, is that last year's enemy is going to be a thing of the past. I do not expect that that's going to be a, a thing. I, I do not expect that he is going to be or enemy is going to be in a situation where anybody is is concerned about um, where anybody is concerned about um, their performance. I just don't think that's going to be the case at all. So I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm setting up a Discord. So I'm going to be setting up a Discord for this channel. But right now I'm setting up a Discord for, for high res at some point. Right now. Um, oh! You click twice and it goes from bad to good. I'm so perplexed. Anyway. 
Pirates Dana is going to be something. I think I gave. I think I did it. Anyway, uh, so we saw Enemy, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest improvements. For Enemy. And in North America, I think they're going to work out very well. Noble is the third team that succeeded. And I had predicted that Noble would make it. Like I said, where are we? Got to get this off the screen. Can't show you that. Sorry. But I'll show you this. Our predictions. Again, I had Noble as number three. I got it right. Me and Hater are the only ones to get it right. Yo, it's all good, CCO. Yo, I saw uh, CCO's a fellow commentator. I saw CCO do some uh, some melee stuff recently. Good stuff, man. Keep it up. 26 months of support. F dot shots. So, when it comes down to it, Noble. This Noble team is a lot of console league players. Uzzy and Chapo are both from the console league. They played together with Aggro, surprisingly enough, uh, on Soar. So, Uzzy, Chapo come together with Wubbin and Wowie, two PC challenger level players, and then MLC Stealth, who obviously is freaking MLC Stealth. Noble is Randozos? I wouldn't say that necessarily. I think that it's actually really funny. I think that this squad will be better than... Our shitters, this squad will be a low end team, but I think our low end teams are stronger than they have been in the past. Uzzy, Chapo, MLC, Wubbin, and Wowie will probably be a mid tier to lower tier team in, in the grand scheme of NA. There's a lot of competition there. Don't forget, I mean, you're, you're looking at a whole slew of people. I think that LG's improved with Baskin in middle lane. I think that Soar's, uh, Soar is. A good look with Andy in the mid, Vedium and Benji coming together, right? I think that's a stronger team. Flashpoint, okay, no. Uh, but I think ALG is improved. You keep the dual lane of, of uh, Oceans and PBM, but you add Matt Yankee to the mid. I think a lot of these teams have improved. A lot of these teams have improved. And so when you look at Noble, yeah, Super Tasty mentioned that Noble's macro game, their, their overall look has to improve. I completely agree. Noble and Flashpoint are your two teams for players that need to, or teams that need to, players that need to grow. And you don't get that opportunity. Xenotronics, for example, the mid laner for LG last season, is now back in his original position as a hunter. And... A lot of people saw him on LG, and he was kind of the player that needed to grow. Nobody's going to complain about the duo lane in that situation. Uh, Scary D was a complaint for a moment, but he stepped it up, and the jungle was fine. Mask. So you move on, and Flashpoint. Flashpoint is the team for players that need to improve. Xenotronics had a stint on a high-end team, but he needs to improve. So he's going to go back to his original position. Shadow Q, I mean, this is his squad. He's here to help the guys out, I guess. Incon needs to improve. Once upon a time, I think that he was a very strong player, but that was once upon a time. Now his his uh, ability has slipped. I'm not going to point to streaming. A lot of people like to say, oh, it's because he streams a lot. But I can name a lot of top-end players that stream a lot. And at the end of the day, I don't think streaming is a negative point to your pro-end pro play whatsoever. At all. Zero. Some pro players believe that streaming shows your tendencies and will make you easier to beat in professional play. I, if someone, when some people, somebody says that to me, I, I don't, I can't agree, but I can't disagree. I think they make a lot of sense, but Raffer and Adapting are two of our biggest streamers and they've won the world championship twice in a row. So... I don't want to point to streaming that has made Incon worse. In fact, the fact of the matter is, I think that other people have just improved quicker than Incon had. And that's sort of what left him in the dust. He's going to be switching over to mid, which he has played in the past. That was his original position. But I think he has more hours logged in the support as far as his pro end play. With that said, Incon's in the mid lane. We'll see how that works out in the long run. Mirage, actually, I think is the odd one out here. 
Aquarius is uh, is an old uh, most wanted player from the challenger scene. Mirage is the odd one out here. I think Mirage needs to improve, but I think this is less about Mirage needing to improve like the rest of the players on this team and more about Mirage just needing to get a chance to be one of the good guys. So like when it comes down to it, I think that um, when it comes down to it, I think that it's just the fact of the matter that Mirage just people don't know him yet. People don't trust him yet. He's still new to the to the scene, so he'll stick around on Noble one more time, and maybe next time around we should uh, we should see what's going to happen with Mirage. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Flashpoint. And the reason I bring up Flashpoint is I think Noble is a very similar uh, similar team in the sense that Wowie is like Mirage. Wowie needs a chance to actually show people what he's made of. Wubbin needs to both show people what he's made of and improve a little bit. Wubbin in the past on his Challenger Cup teams haven't, hasn't been the strongest. It's just kind of like, oh, he's Wubbin. We know Wubbin. We'll bring Wubbin. And that's why he's gotten his pro-end spots, like Randozers or whatever. But I do think he needs to improve. Maduro's not here anymore, but MLC Stealth is. And MLC Stealth has publicly said that he needs to improve his attitude. And that seems, that might seem like a small thing if you are out of the loop or if you're, or if you don't quali uh, qualifying, um, or if you're not closely following the scene. But MLC came out and said, like, look, you know, I have I have attitude issues. And that's a very big deal if you've never played team sports or team games before. Understanding that how much that can affect the game. MLC is one of the better mids in the world. And yet his, his attitude and his approach to competition kept him out of the minds of many of the pro-end players. A lot of people said that they just won't team with MLC. And honestly, I got worried because Brett, I like Brett. I don't have to play with him, so that might be why I like him. But we we get along really well. Guys, how do I add an admin on, on uh, Discord? Hold on, I got, I got to do something for work. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to do something for, for you know, MLC stealth. I just want to remember what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, posting. Let's see. Hi, Res Dan. Nope, that's kick. I don't want to kick high res, Dan. That's for sure. Um, oh, let's add a role. Let's say admin guy. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is actually a problem. That's actually a problem. Uh, I'm going to figure this out. I'll be right back in just a little bit, guys. Sorry. Where's my button? Here we are.
Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Figure it out. Figure it out. I got it. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Uh, oh, what was? Each. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, figure out. Discord is just not my my numero uno skill. But I figured it out, and we got it. Anyway, my going back to my point. Sorry, guys, about that brief interruption. We were talking MLC Stealth and his role on Noble. And here's the deal: is that this, so? This is something that um, has been known behind the scenes for a long time. Uh, the sense that the sense that he um, said that he hasn't had the best attitude. And this is something that people have known behind the scenes for a long time. I mean, it's not my job. It's so weird working for the league and being a content creator. Because it's not my job to spoil stuff, right? Like, I frequently know the rosters beforehand. But it's not my job to go ahead and spoil that. If I was a freelance reporter, I mean, shit, I probably would. And when it comes down to it, working in the scene... We've known that MLC is this passive-aggressive dude in-game. And I need to stress in-game. We've known that MLC Stealth is passive-aggressive dude in-game for years. His original uh, Cloud9 roster had mentioned A lot of people that he's teamed with have mentioned it and have kind of said, all right, you know what, we probably just won't invite him next time. And it's been a we probably just won't invite him next time instead of a fuck you, MLC, because one, you don't really need drama. Who wants it? And two, like at the end of the day, I'm just not going to team with him. The problem that MLC ran into was that Every, he had teamed with everybody, and everybody had the same mentality. And I had the feeling, looking at the rosters uh, for this upcoming summer spring split, I kind of sat there and was like, who's left? And I like Brett, because like I said, a lot of people say he seems really, he's really chill on stream, like Bad Lil Ripper says, and we had some other people in chat say, like, he's just a nice dude. I will, I will, I will tell you. From interacting with MLC Stealth since the launch tournament almost. That he is a good dude. He's a fun guy to be around. And there's nothing wrong with MLC Stealth. But I also don't have to play with him. And that's also a big change. Right? That's also a big deal. So in that, so in that in mind. Uh, with that in mind. It's, it's one of those like situations where he just doesn't have any option. And I think it was a nice wake up call for him because I have been, I've had that mindset once upon a time when I did music and I learned very quickly as a young kid that you can't be, you can't have that mindset. You can't be of the mentality that you are flawless and everything is always somebody else's fault. And so that's quickly, I mean, that's very quickly. You learn that when you start either games or content creation, I'll call music content creation as well. Anytime you're going to collaborate with other people on a team, you have to have that push and pull. And if you leave every practice, like, well, my riff was fucking perfect, but I don't know what happened to everybody else. Then, then you're just not going to succeed. And MLC has kind of like reached that point. And now he's going to learn. Or he already has, and he's made the commitment to changing. And so here's the deal. And I like that Final K is sticking up for him because Final K, he's he's got a great point. Y'all don't know what happened in those comms. Y'all don't know what happened behind the scenes. And and and, and from where I'm standing, I think that. It's it's a good change. Where is Chapo? I saw Chapo post something. Is he still L Sword Chapo? Chapo Noble Chapo. I don't know. I'm just gonna type it into Twitter because Chapo actually said something surrounding um or, or about it's L Chapo Smite. Twitter.com slash L Chapo Smite. Uh, <laughs> I gotta show you this. Uh, first of all, L Chapo new to the league. You guys are going to uh, learn and love him. Learn to love him, my opinion. Chapo, the gym, the only Valentine I'll ever need. Uh, but he said something about MLC. Um, he said something about MLC that, that I really enjoyed after they made it to the SPL. Um, we, we were learning as a team as relegations went on. The willingness to learn when there's so much pressure on the line is incredible. And he's not directly mentioning MLC, but that 
is that this is a comment about MLC in my eyes. I'm reading between the lines, and this is about the team as a unit. Like I said, the entire team needs to learn. But this specifically, the willingness to learn when there's so much pressure on the line is incredible because it's not about MLC in the sense, but the fact that MLC fits that bill is very important because you look at that and you say, hey, man, like, all right. MLC is a super pro. He's he's been a world champion. He has a literal literal character wearing his jersey in the fucking game, and he's gonna play with two console league players and two challenger and two challenger cup guys. The idea that MLC would swallow his pride and vibe with these dudes and perform at a high level while trying to learn is not the MLC that we know from the past. And that's the big thing that I need to that I need to drive home is that if y'all want proof that MLC is is already committed to improving, r- r- that, that comment right there is it. Because MLC from last year and the year before probably would just be like, look, man, just listen to me. Wubbin was console, so three console bros. I think Wubbin and Wowie are the challenger team, and Uzzy and Chapo are the are the console squad. Even though, yes, Wubbin did play some Xbox. But when it comes down to it, th- that is proof. That MLC is committed to, to really changing is the fact that MLC of the past would not have that mentality. Would he even play with these guys is a different story. But I saw somebody else asking, I, I saw somebody else saying up top that um, just saying somebody has a bad attitude is, is the wrong idea. And and that's not what went down. Uh, people, Weekend came out publicly and whether it needs to be public is a different story. But my man's Weekend came out and was like, look, you got a bad attitude. And PBM was like, you got a bad attitude. And they both went in depth into what it is. And basically, MLC gets a little passive aggressive. He thinks that he's better. He has previously had illusions of grandeur and his way to respond to that is to be very passive aggressive in game. He'll die three times and sit there and go, well, if I had a jungler, maybe I wouldn't be dead. And that is infuriating to deal with almost more so than direct. Like you suck. I think you can go ahead and say to it, like you're such a shitty jungler, fix it. And that'll be better received than passive aggressiveness in a competitive environment. Because at least you can diffuse that first situation. Be like, chill, bro, I made a mistake. That second situation just makes you roll your eyes and get heated. So MLC realizes that this is an issue. MLC himself came out and said he was going to take time off of the split to improve. But whether he approached his team or they approached him, I think it was the right decision to not take time off. But to improve with a team that is in a different spot from where he's used to be. From where he's used to being, excuse me. And I think that this will, A, teach MLC to be humble, which MLC is a humble dude. I In-game, I think he needs to swallow his pride a little bit. And that right there, working with these guys that are not on the same level as him theoretically, is step one. Step two, the way they performed, they improved, they were looking to learn. Like Chapo said, I am already Team MLC Stealth. I want to see this guy succeed, and I think he has all the right tools to do it. So, I'm very excited for that, in all honesty. I, I think it's going to be a cool look. I think it's going to be a very important uh, move for MLC to go ahead and, and, and be that sort of player. So, him and his noble roster get there. Enemy get there. And like I said, in memory of Gabe, which is uh, out of control. I mean, this team this team could fight for a number one position right here. Uh, you got Snoopy, uh, Ionic. Eonic belongs here. Snoopy, Eonic, Herwin, Asana Short, and Walrus. Snoopy and Eonic were the duel in that made up Team Solo Mid, and that was one of the most dominant teams Smite has ever seen. Herwin is a player that still probably has a chip on his shoulder, but had a lot to prove and proved it, and now here he is after the fact, just crushing it. Sano Shore was one of the best junglers in the entire console league, and he's crushing it. The fact that Snoopy and Eonic brought him on says a lot about his potential. And Walrus. No, I'm just kidding. Walrus is a very potent. Walrus was perhaps one of the best, uh, one of the better low end players, if not the best, from last year. We saw Walrus 
be the only player on his team sometimes. Sometimes Aduro didn't show up. Sometimes Mirage didn't show up. But there were games where every single game where you'd see Wally go out there on the Vamana or the fucking Sun Wukong and just crush it. I really expect him to... Uh, I really expect Walrus to go ahead and, and, and do this. Uh, do you think it's okay to jump on your teammates during a game? Is it better to do it after the game when people can't get tilted? It depends on the situation, and it depends on the player, and it depends on the team dynamic. It's such a hard, it's such a hard conversation to have um, holistically when you're coming down to that because it's 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 so there's so many variables, right? I'm a guy that I'm a guy that in the moment don't fucking yell at me, kid. Don't yell at me, kid. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. And you can yell at me for like a quick second. Like, dog, what are you doing? You're on the wrong side of the map. And I'll be like, shit, I'm on the wrong side of the map. Got it. But if you're going to continuously yell at me, I'm going to tune you out. And I'm just not that interested. Whereas my buddy Kyle, on the other hand, you, you, you have to yell at him. Otherwise, he just doesn't respect your call. So it depends on the player. It depends on the team dynamic. Does the team get along better when everything is hunky-dory? Does the team get along better when everybody's screaming at each other? Believe it or not, that works for some people. So you can't answer that question straight up. You really gotta you really gotta come down to to individual answers, to be honest with you. So uh that one doesn't really have an answer. Elevate Cyclone and Novus Orsa, like I said, they're in it. I'm not expecting much out of Novus Orsa. Um Elevate Sure. Cyclone or Elevate I think is probably a better look than what Cyclone is gonna have. Uh we're taking a look at Cyclone and Vote MBK, Collis, Wolfie, Ice Ice, Deathwalker. I mean, this is a this team is that you sort of just go sure, right? Um, the biggest part of this team that was lost during the offseason, I think uh, we kind of miss in the sense that he's not pictured here. Hazer won't be a part of this team. And I know we meme him a lot. I know we joke about him a lot. But in all honesty, I think that Hazer really was a big part of what made Cyclone GG a, a strong team. His ability to be intelligent when it comes to picks and bans, his ability to be intelligent when it comes to strategy, is a really big part of what made this squad successful. Hazer and Collis would come together and put their minds together and, and make a decent enough team. Now, I think the raw amount of talent on this squad is a little bit lacking, which is why we don't see them as number one in juxtaposition of some of the more established teams i think that cyclone is probably trailing behind as far as that's concerned but their ability to be uh strategic allowed them to you know kind of stay relevant with hazer out of the picture i think it might be an issue i i'm i'm it's we've seen a lot of do nothing coaches in smite and hazer is one of the few examples of a coach that actually means something and so cyclone gg i like these guys a lot i want to say that full first and foremost that there are teams that i don't like but collis i think is really dope i think he's a really cool dude i think wolfie's really cool ice ice baby is a fun dude to hang out with death walker is actually one of the bright notes i'm going to mention this but i don't expect them to be very strong i expect to see them in relegations and maybe even relegated out next next split death walker is a really big part of this team. And I'll tell you why. Because last season, Deathwalker was was arguably a liability on this team. I didn't think he actually helped the team out. I don't think he actually helped the team out in any way. I think he was bad. I think it was a problem. Every day you'd go out, vote NBK and Collis, their dual lane would slay. Wolfie would sometimes slay, and Ice Ice Baby would occasionally do what he needed to. And Deathwalker, you could always count on him not being good. Now, in relegation, I saw a different Deathwalker. And I, I that is... And, uh, let me, put, let, me, let me tell you right now. Analysts don't like to sit here and say somebody is bad. Okay, sometimes it's fun. But it's more fun to be proven wrong... It's more, or to have that person fix it. It's more fun for me to sit here and be like, Variety is the worst player in the game, and the next year have him be one of the best players in the game. That's more fun, because that tells me a story, and that's why I watch these games. Deathwalker last split, not a strong player. What we saw during, what we saw during relegations, fantastic. 
absolutely fantastic. I love that shit. No op watch solo range limit. So Alpha Jackal has joined the squad. We'll see what happens with that. I don't really know his, how much he'll impact the team, but we'll certainly keep a close eye on it. Uh, Novus Orso, like I said, um, is one of the other squads, but we'll talk about Elevate first. First of all, let's talk about the biggest loss to this team. Not Jiffy. Glad he's gone. Sorry, Jiffy. Love you. Nulissa. Nulissa out. Problem for me. Now, some people said that she wasn't vocal enough. Some people commented on the fact that she didn't have enough communication. And I think one of my analysts backstage brought up a big point in that just nobody listened to her. Whether or not they respected it or whatnot, I'm sure you can go deep into that situation and think about many different reasons why. I'm not here to report on the why. I'm here to report on the what. A lot of times, specifically, I can remember a call where she said, hey, let's get the tower and get out. And a lot of these players, they sat around, Jiffy waited, and, and we watched them wipe. Melissa made the calls. She's a great mid laner. She's not on the team for some reason. And it has a lot to do with some of the other dudes on the squad. Instead of talking about what's no longer there, let's talk about what is there. Jermaine, Dardas, Blizzard, Fails, and Mogao. Fails instead of Jiffy. Oh my goodness, what an improvement. What an improvement. This is the, this is such an important team for... This is an important team for, for Fails to be on. No, this is like Anister actually. She has a lower voice in game. She's not loud, but when she speaks, her team should listen. I completely agree. I've I've watched them. I've watched them, you know, practice and stuff like that. And she she's a great force, but she's a little quiet. Could she be louder? Sure. But should you fucking shut up and listen to your teammate? Absolutely. And I think a lot of their issues came from not listening to Nulissa and instead listening to Jiffy. When Jiffy made the right call, maybe. 60% of the time. New list is going to make the right call 85% of the time, but everybody just listens to Jiffy because he's going to curse you out in Scottish if you don't listen to him. So what are you going to do? I really... I hope she finds a team. I think New list is an SPL player that's sitting on the sidelines for absolutely no fucking reason and it kind of upsets me. So when it comes down to it, Jermaine, Dardes, Blizzard, Fails, and Mogao are going to be your squad. Listen, Jermaine and Dardes, I like this dual lane. I like this dual lane. I think Jermaine is good. Sure. Jermaine and Dardes together, the Bruise Brothers. I think that this dual lane has earned their sort of uh, their reputation. These guys are strong, and they're going to continue to be strong. And I enjoy it. I like this. Blizzard FX. I mean, who is this guy? Literally, who is this guy? He ain't got no picture. He's got a question mark on his head. And that's me when I'm talking about how strong this guy is going to be. I have no idea if he's going to be strong. No idea if he's going to be weak. No idea if he's going to be useless or actually... I, I do not know. No clue. So we'll see. Fails, though. Fails over here. Looking like a high elf. Where is he? I don't got the big picture. Oh, man. That's obnoxious. Can I can I click on him? Oh, I want the big picture of fails. Fails, on the other hand, is this gonna work? Oh, it's not gonna work. Anyway, I think that he is he is such an improvement over what Jiffy did. Uh, he is very strong. He's a seventeen year old Brit, formerly known as Fails. Um, I think that uh, He's a really big part of the team, uh, and I think that he's going to continue to be a strong part of the team, in all honesty. Um, he has the ability to be the star player if nobody else is going to be, but he also has the ability to swallow his ego and actually just role play, which I don't think a lot of junglers actually can do. A lot of junglers want to be the man 100% of the time, and Fails is the guy that can do both. Get you a jungler that can do both. You're looking at fails right there. So, I I am happy that he has his time in the sun. Historically, I think that fails needed to practice a little bit and needed to learn a little bit before he could be on a, on, on a, on a professional team. I didn't like what I saw out of him in the past 100%, but I think this season is a fail of the season to prove a lot of people wrong, and next time, the schedule? I don't know what you mean by that fake Viking. 
Um, I think that this is fails his shot for right now. He's going to be good enough on a team that is good enough. And after this split, depending on if fails plays the way I expect him to, I think that comes summer and fall, fails might be able to find himself on a strong high end team. If fails replacing Aninster or adapting, excuse me, next split, nah, dog, not gonna happen. But can fails climb? The roster ranks like we saw somebody like Walrus do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can he climb the roster ranks like somebody hurt like Heroin did? Absolutely. And I really think that's gonna be the case. Is that is that he's going to be alright and then show people they're wrong. Mogao. Here's my issue with Mogao. He's never improved. He just hasn't ever gotten better. He succeeded in relegation because people didn't ban him out. Like, it just wasn't that... It it, it just wasn't... It wasn't a good look for Mogao. He just got himself in... He was able... What I'm saying is he got away with stuff that he's not going to get away with in the SPL. This is another, this is another, this is another relationship that I want to put on the divorce board. Frost Jack and Shadow Nightmare. Happy Valentine's Day. Get divorced. Jermaine and Dardes. You have your, you have your third partner, Mogao. Happy Valentine's Day. Get divorced. He's not. Uh, Jean-Luc Vesatoro, if you take Odin, Hades, Ra, and Hercules out of the conversation, he is nothing but a wrangly Sun Wukong. This guy is not good enough to be on this team. They need to get rid of him. I just, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think he's strong enough, man. I don't think he's strong enough. I think that this will, this has to be the split for Elevate to learn that. Otherwise, they're destined to not be a strong team. I think that they made a mistake by getting rid of Nulissa. I think they made a... What's the opposite of mistake? I think they made a negative by getting rid of Nulissa, but I think they made a positive by also getting rid of Jiffy. And I think they made a positive by adding fails. I did have to do that, Wheels McGee. So when it comes down to it, I just I I I think Mogao is not the guy. This split, we will see them five to eight. And it will be Mogao's fault. Swap Mogao. I don't know if Blizzard can play solo. Toss toss Blizzard over there in the solo lane, bring Nulissa back. This is the team that can qualify fourth up. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on these guys. Technically, they're professional players. Nova's Orsa. Is another technically professional team um, that I think is going to have more issues than not. Shadow Nightmare and Frosty, I've ever discussed that I think they need to break up. Ducky is the light in the darkness for this team. And Frezzy, I, I, I have hated on Frezzy in the past. I have mentioned, yeah, toss no numbers in the solo lane. He, he's good enough to be on a team. I agree. Frezzy is a dude that I've hated on in the past because of his lack of competitive mindset, let's say. I don't really know what Blizzard is. We'll see. And I think that like MLC, Frezzy is talented, but his attitude has usurped the spotlight away from his level of play. Now, MLC was internal attitude. MLC was a great player, but his internal attitude made his teammates dislike him. And that makes the team inherently worse. Frezzy's issue was his external attitude. Frezzy is a strong player, and if you ask Ataraxia, he's the best support in the world. Now, I think that's a little misguided, but I think Frezzy is on the better end than he is on the negative side. With that in mind... I think that Frezzy, Frezzy has a tendency to come into lane and taunt you and then die because he was taunting you or something. Frezzy's going to sit there and back and die because he's in the wrong spot trying to be a flashy guy. Now, I part of me likes that about Frezzy. Y'all know that I like my big mouth dudes. Shouts to Weaken. 
Y'all know that I like a little bit of edge in my gameplay. Shouts to Raffer. But at the same time, you got to win. And so when it comes down to it, I think that Frezzy... Oops, I hit the mute button. I think that Frezzy here is a... He needs to fix his attitude a little bit. But not too much, please. Don't be a nice guy like Ataraxia. But be kind of a be kind of a mean. Be, be, be nice and little in between. Nobody knows Ducky's name. He's just Ducky. He's too little to have a name. But so for Frezzy, I would like to see Frezzy fix the attitude just a little bit. Focus more on playing the game correctly and then being a dick afterwards instead of being a dick first and then, you know, leaving it up in the air. So I have I have my reservations about this team. I think specifically Frosty in the jungle is too inconsistent for this team to consistently look for a win. As for Flurry Q, I mean we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. <sighs> North America, like we said, Gabe, enemy and noble. That's relegations pretty much. Do we have a uh, do we have a schedule for this week? I don't think we do. Just oh, we do. Here we go. So opening week, opening week. This is what we're going to be taking a look at for opening week. It's very exciting. It is cool. Gandalf here on ninety nine. Flurry Q is the first pro from the Czech Republic. That is really cool. I like seeing, especially in Europe. I like seeing uh, a, a big diverse amount of people. Um, we have two Italians in the league. Just two. It's Dark Dodo and the other one. Gorgonzola, um, who actually didn't make it. So it's still just Dark Dodo. Uh, Flurry Q is the first one from the Czech Republic. I like those. I like seeing the diversity. But our opening season, our opening week. Here, let's uh, let's take a picture for, for, for Twitter, shall we? Saturday! 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 Nope, nope, where's me? Here we are. So, we're going to talk about the, um, we're going to put this over on the Twitter. We're going to talk about that first week. So, Cyclone versus Team Dignitas. Now, keep in mind, anytime I think Team Dignitas, I immediately think Shadow Nightmare. But this instead is Variety's new team. Okay? Which is uh, kind of scary. Kind of scary. Let's talk about the first week of SPL. Twitch.tv slash FSWAG. Come join us. So yeah, sorry, sorry about the, uh, sorry about the uh, what's it called, the reschedule. So uh, I see a couple of more people in here. What, yo, I'm on Twitch right now. If you go without me, I'm gonna beat you up. People going to Waffle House without me, ugh. But so yeah, Sunday we had some issues. Sunday we had some issues. So, uh, oh well. In any event, here we are, Tuesday, and we're going to be talking about Saturday. Cyclo GG takes on Team Dignitas. So, oh, you want you want to see uh, you want to see something really cool? Let's watch this. I think I can I think I can do the the head to head. Watch this, guys. I'm going to show you how to be good at computers. You click on Windows key and right. And then you click on the other one. Where's the other one? Here it is. And now you can see the two rosters. Now. And look at that. Look at that. I'm teaching you guys how to computerize. Oh, it's so cool. Damn right, King. I love me, Sam Elton John. So it's going to be these two teams, Team Dignitas versus Cyclone. You got Arkle, Trix, Tank, Zeros, Cubo, Fred, and Variety versus Who Gives a Shit? No offense to Cyclone, we'll vote Callus, Wolfie, Ice Ice, and Deathwalker. But at the end of the day, I think that this Team Dignitas roster is just too damn strong. <laughs> I mean, this is out of this world, man. This squad, these two, this squad right here, Trickstake and Quavo and Zeros and Variety. I mean, this is a super strong team. It's a super strong team. I'd lamented their lack of leadership in the past. And we'll see how this works out. I wonder if Zeros is as n enough of a leader for this team to deal with adversity. I am not concerned about this team taking wins against lower-ended teams. What happens when this squad goes against energy? Do they fight and blow up? I don't really know. 
Free FP. This one is easily all Cyclone. Like, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Go ahead and vote on Cyclone. You can put a dot on that. And don't forget, I'll also be putting out a predictions video earlier or a little bit later in the week to just to boil it down. But, yeah, you can you can watch it live and cheat here. Sanguine versus Valence Squadron. Okay, this is another team that, well, doesn't have a logo. <laughs> Um, but Sanguine versus Valen Squadron. Sanguine is another team that has a has a different look than before. Uh, Valen Squadron is the old team Orbit, Funball, Lobster, and Zelia. They bring along Big Man Tings and Cherio. And Sanguine bring Nika, Death Panther, Mr. Stefan, Mike the Magikarp, and the Dark Dodo. So... Believe it or not, I think that this will actually be closer than it should be. Valence Squadron easily wins this, but I think this will be closer than it should be. I think that Valence Squadron are going to have to learn how to play with Cherry and Big Man Tings. Um, I think that these guys are going to have to really establish themselves and be a... It, you're not going to plug and play this squad, come into SPL Day 1, and be the number one team on campus. Yo, it's Goody Chapel. Congratulations. Welcome to the SPL. Oh, and Dergius is on Sanguine as well. Lord help them. But so you're not going to just come in through here and say, bam, day one, best team in the league. I don't think they're going to be best team, but I think Valence Squadron is going to be very good. In fact, I think Valence Squadron, as is, might be better than Orbit was last time. But this segment roster, I don't have any faith in. I think that these guys are average to below. I this is I don't think this is a very strong lineup. But they will have their moments throughout the season. I think this is the squad that you'll see them finish six, seven, eight. But they'll have a couple of highlight real plays where you sit there and go, "Damn, I remember Get Fisher. He was the guy that." Jumped into the mid-harpies at level 2 and lost his game, team the game at the first minute. Is that the same dude that has this Najja highlight reel? And you'll be like, damn, I remember Nika. He was that he was that rookie solo laner that, that looked really good. And then they moved him to Hunter for some reason so that their terrible mid laner could play solo. I don't know. I just, I don't have faith in the Sanguine roster. I think that they're going to have issues, but I do think that they're capable of, of flashes of greatness. So I think that Valent Squadron are going to win this, but I think that Valent Squadron versus Sanguine Esports is actually going to be closer than it should be or will be later on in the year. Novus Orsa, the big bear versus Team Elevate. Now we just spoke, we just spoke in depth about Team Elevate, but let's talk a little bit about the matchup that they're going to have against Shadow Nightmare and his crew. Jermaine, Dardes, Blizzard, Fails, and Mogao versus Flurry Q, Frezzy, Shadow, Frost, Egg, and Ducky. I think this is easy to call a split, um, but I'll be honest. I want to call this for Elevate, but I'm just not familiar enough with Blizzard. I agree, Renz. I think Mr. Stefan is strong, which is where I think those moments of greatness will be. I think you'll see great stuff out of the jungle. From Get Fisher, two out of every ten games. I think you'll see great stuff out of Nika in the Hunter role, depending on how well he can adapt to the Hunter role. And Mr. Stefan is probably a thumbs up. But in general, I think that that team is less talented than the rest of the league. Elevate, like I said, I would like to go with Elevate here. But I think that it's a little bit... because I just don't know... New Lissa does not have a team. I just don't know how strong Blizzard effects is. I, he is a big question mark to me. And because of that, I'm very curious to see where he will wind up. If he becomes a very strong mid, I think that he winds up being one of the, God, fix, damn it. Um, I think that he becomes a very important part and I think this team can be very successful. Somebody in chat says, who is it in chat? Archangel Kane says, I think Novus looks stronger in almost every role but ADC. I'm glad you said that because Flurry is a question mark. Frezzy versus Dardes. So, you, Frezzy versus Dardes, like I said, I'll take Dardes over Frezzy most of the time. They're similar players as far as their talent is concerned, but Frezzy will get himself in trouble. 
Shadow Nightmare over Blizzard. I don't know who Blizzard is, but even if I did, I would probably say Shadow Nightmare over Blizzard. Fails over Frosty Egg. I will always take Fails over Frosty Egg. Sorry. And uh, I'll take Ducky over Mogao. So it seems to be, individually, it's kind of like a one-to-one-to-one-to-one back and forth, right? But that's not how Smite is played. Smite is played as a team. And Jermaine and Darda as, as a unit will be stronger than I think the unit of Norvis Horse is as five. I don't know, Flare Boot. I have asked that question a couple of times. I actually don't know. Taco didn't transition to NA. Taco, what? Taco is from North America. She lived in Europe for a little while. Nulissa would be looking for a North American team at this point. So I don't know what the case is. There becomes legal issues with where you're living in the center of third. I ain't trying to blow nobody's spot up. I don't know anything about that situation. So I can intelligently comment on what kind of team Nulissa is looking for. But I did see her say, I did see her say that she was looking for a team, if I'm not mistaken. What is she? Nulissa Smite? Where's Alyssa's Twitter? Here's Alyssa's Twitter. Oh my God, I got to give her a retweet first of all. Hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day and it's the Boosh blowing a kiss. Absolutely, got to have that. She'll stream because she's a man of her word. Um, where is it? Where is it? I'm also looking for a team mid. This was exactly a month ago. So she's looking for a team. I don't know where. Yeah, she's not getting any offers. Oh, well. In any event, I don't know where she's looking for a team, but she's certainly looking for a team. So, Dardes, so you haven't seen enough about Dardes. you got to watch more of the Pro League. Dardes is fantastic. Frenzy did get the finals even if he got kicked. I, no, Archangel, I invite you to view last week's episode on YouTube.com slash FDOTNY. I went in-depth about Frezzy. I've been watching Frezzy play for three years. And he's been the same damn player. He did make it to finals. You're completely right. On a team that featured Variety, the best player at Worlds, Ataraxia, who had the best performance of his goddamn career, Pretty Prime, who's quietly one of the better mids in the entire planet. So yes, Frezzy made it to the finals at Worlds. Did Frezzy make it to the finals at Worlds? Or did Obey make it to the final at Worlds? Obey made it to the finals at Worlds. And Frezzy was on that team. Which does deserve a certain amount of applause. But I think that you can give two golf claps to Frezzy while the round of applause belongs to the rest of the squad. So, I don't know. I, I think I think Dardes is, is very, very strong. And uh, the rest of them, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Frezzy, not my guy. Not my choice. Don't let Adaraxia hear me say that, though. Obey versus Energy. This one, this one should be a sight to see. This one should be very interesting. Obey versus Energy. Okasa, I do not vote on the MVP. I would have voted Variety for MVP. Uh, but there is, of course, the idea. And I talked at length about this last week as well. Check out last week's episode on YouTube. I talked about this last week as well in the sense that a lot of people believe that the MVP can't be on a losing team. And in that must have been whoever voted on the MVP that must have been their thought process as well I actually don't know who voted on MVP to be honest with you but it wasn't me it was not the commentary actually it might have been the commentary because it just wasn't me I uh I do not know in any event Emily no Raffer Yaman y'all know who energy is obey Adaraxia Emil Z upgrade Pretty Prime, Captain Twig, Maniac. We get to see the debut of the Portuguese powerhouse one more time. Will he be the same as, May as Variety? Absolutely not. It will almost undoubtedly be a downgrade at first, possibly in the future. Variety, one of, I'll say one of so people don't get angry. Variety, one of the best players in the league last season. It's just you, Brickington. Rafford does not get carried. Maniac hasn't played for a full year. 
But F dot, he played at the beginning of season three with Fnatic. If you call what Fnatic did in the beginning of season three playing, I do not agree with you. Maniac has not played Pro Smite for a year. And that's going to make even if Variety wasn't arguably the best player from last year, I think that would even that even without that superlative there, Maniac is going to be a step down from where the solo laner was. Um But that is the case. So you're gonna feel that. At the same time, Amilzi is one of the better players. Uh, in the support role, he's extremely um, sound. He's a, he's of sound mind when it comes to strategy. I told a story last week about going back to some of the old tournaments. He's 14 years old. He's coaching a team there. He's got an iPad with Matt, with jungle routes and ward placement spots. This guy thinks about the game the same way Ataraxia does. And by having two people of that mindset, that's going to help the team out incredibly. His Play style next to Frezzy, as far as just how good are they? Probably comparable, but I think that Emilzi has a stronger uh, set of ground underneath his feet. He's a better grounded player, and that'll help a lot. So, Maniac here a step backwards. Uh, I don't actually Emilzi a step forwards. Energy versus Obey, repeat of finals at Worlds. We'll see. I think Energy wins this one, but I, I I would like to see Obey sneak one out. I can't say that they'll win because I think they I think Maniac will need more practice. JFW asks, what should we look for in Maniac's God Pool? Other gods he's known for playing. So going way back, Maniac was known for healers like Aphrodite, um, Hell to a lesser extent, Ra. He plays, uh, after that, he realized he had to change his god pool to go ahead and move on past that meta. And he learned warriors. Vamana, Chalk, Hercules. He plays the he plays the aggressive side of warrior pool rather than the defensive side of warrior pool. I wouldn't expect to see uh, I wouldn't expect to see too many like boring tanks come out from him. He can play Sobek, but I I I in this match against Energy, I don't expect it. I think you're going to see Vamanas. I think you're going to see Chalk. I think you're going to see stuff like that. However, in the future, once Obey gets a opponent that isn't as hot. I think you might, I think you would see, I think you can expect to see Maniac bring an, an Aphrodite out. I really and truly think that you're going to see what Maniac can do with the healers. Not against this team. Not against this team. And against energy. But against some of the not as strong opposition. I think we're going to see Maniac Aphrodite. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And that's what I'm excited about. So this one, I think this goes to energy. If you put a single win in the Obey column, I'm not going to be upset with you. But yeah, Afro and Shanga are his two original characters. And if anybody's going to bring him out, it's going to be Maniac. Against energy, probably not. But expect the Hercules. Expect gods like that. I'm going to be very excited. I'm going to be very, very excited about Maniac's return. So that's, uh, that's our recap of the games over on the European side of things. I think that Dignitas, which is Variety's new team, is going to trounce Cyclone. I think that Valence Squadron versus Sanguine, Valence winds up with two wins, but it's going to be closer than you might expect, and it should be, because Sanguine does have some bright spots, but more importantly, Valence Squadron needs to get the synergy there together. I think moving away from players that they've played with for literal years, swapping out to players like Cherio will take a moment. I think they, they will win, but it will be closer. Novus Orsa versus Elevate is a little bit closer than I'd like to admit. I think this is the safe one. If you want to call any game a split this week, you can call a split for here. And Obey versus Energy. I think Energy takes two because of Maniac on Obey. Probably needs a little bit more practice. But if Obey wins one, I won't be surprised. In memory of Gabe, we'll take on Team Allegiance after, them. after that. Over on Sunday, that'll start our North American stuff. Um, where are you, ALG? Here you are, ALG. So it's going to be ALG taking on In Memory of Gabe. And like I said, I think both of these teams, honestly, are, are, are strong suited to do well. Evan, Snoopy Man, Jones over there in the Hunter, Ionic in the support role, Herwin in the middle lane, Sinoshore and Wally. 
make up that team. And then Oceans, PBM, Met Yankee Weekend, and, and Cyclone Spin. I think that in memory of Gabe has the upper hand here. But I think the team of Leans can actually beat them. I think that Weekend and Met Yankee might have some insight into what these guys are going to do. And can sort of topsy, topsy-turvy them because of that. Also... Here's the thing that I think we're going to see out of ALG. I think ALG is going to succeed in this question mark meta. I think this meta works very well for teams like ALG and Eager and Valen Squadron who are creative and do more than just play the game. They play the game and they play the game of playing the game in the sense that they're down to get creative. They're down to be weird. Chunga Jungle makes a lot of sense with the rest of that roster. There's a lot of things that players don't do simply for the sake of not doing them. And Team Allegiance and Team Eager and Valence Squadron are the teams that are going to be playing there. These are the guys that are that think about the game differently. Snoopy and Ionic do so to a certain extent, but not in the direction that Team Allegiance does. So I think In Memory of Gabe is perhaps the better team here. But even despite In Memory of Gabe being the better team here, I think Team Allegiance's creativity might have them pull out a strategy that Gabe is not thinking about and allows them to win. I think that is very possible. Is he on a Kachak complaining? I don't know why your name's not on the on the page, actually. Um, and that's something that I will personally fix Whenever I go into work, which I think is Friday. But I will fix that if it's not fixed by then. I saw a couple of other changes. Because we all we, we updated the site in a big batch. And not blaming things on technology. But sometimes the technology gives out. So I doubt it was a personal oversight. And more like we clicked the button, but it didn't actually listen. In any event, um, I think that In Memory of Gabe is probably the better team. Versus Team Allegiance. But I think in this situation right now where the current starts and the current strategies aren't set in stone like they have been in the past i think team allegiance might be able to sneak a win here um i don't think that i don't think that team allegiance can win twice this is either a split or two games to in memory of gabe but i really want to take my head off my hat off to two things for team allegiance one the meta is going to gift team allegiance because their creativity and everything I just said. And Cyclone Spin. I think I think the solo lane is a little bit more open than it has been in the past. And open solo lanes befit Cyclone Spin. When you can tell Cyclone Spin to go play solo Thanatos before it was a thing. When you can go tell Cyclone Spin to go play solo Bakasura. He's going to win. So. I got to think of my top. It's always the worst. Sometimes you get that on camera. It's so terrible. Here I can just do whatever I want. But during the SPL, sometimes you're sitting there just like, please take the camera off of me. Please just go to picks and bands. Oh shit, we're still on camera during picks and bands. And it's like a miserable <laughs> experience. <laughs> it can certainly, it can certainly happen. Um, well, I don't know who that is, but that's kind of funny. Let's retweet. So, I'm not sick. I just got like, to, you know, you know, like do something wrong. Luminosity versus Flashpoint. Uh, not even going to go into this one. Luminosity wins. Noble versus Enemy is a is a nice little matchup that we're going to get to see this weekend, I think. Um, Noble versus Enemy should be really fun to watch. Uh, not only is it going to be a replay of something that we saw during uh, relegations, which I think is always a fun time, but also these teams are, these teams, these are the teams that have so much to prove. Like, Flashpoint also has a lot to prove, to be honest with you, but they're going to work a lot harder to prove it. Noble is a team that has a lot to prove, that can prove it. So, if Flashpoint is a team that has a lot to prove because... They have earned a bad rap and all need to work individually to get rid of that bad rap. Noble is a team that has to that has a lot to prove because for some reason they have a bad rap. El Chapo and Uzi were Challenger Cup level players that weren't good enough to make it into the PC Pro League at the time that shifted over to console for a year and a half to two years. 
More like a year, a year and a half. And after succeeding in that league, they come back much better for their time in the console league. But because they were console players, people kind of sit there and go, eh, they're console players. They're not going to do good. Wubbin historically has been the, the quintessential shitter. He has just been like kind of, kind of just, just not really all there, not good enough, kind of a crummy attitude. But, He's a strong player now and has been with a better attitude for a long time. But because he's not in the spotlight, people don't know that. They think of Wubbin from two, three years ago, two years ago, not Wubbin from last year or this most recent memory of relegation. Even somebody in chat says they really liked, they really liked the, uh, the performance that they saw out of Wubbin. And I think Wubbin has, has earned his, uh, his, his sort of position. MLC has, you know, got a little bit of a bad rap because of his attitude, but he's still a great player. And Wowie is, Wowie doesn't have a bad rap. Wowie's just sort of Wowie. So I think that this team has a lot to prove, and I think that they're capable of proving it. Sato Show, I feel like, has hidden behind the curtain. Chapo is super fucking loud, and Uzzy is related to Chapo, or connected to Chapo, because he's his teammate. So everybody's like, those are the two console boys. Sino Shore gets to hide behind the fact that he doesn't stream, he's kind of quiet, and ain't nobody really know him. I think less people knew who Sino, I think more people thought Sino Shore was some unknown Challenger-esque player or ranked player a la PBM than they thought he was a console transfer. El Chapo and Uzi, everybody knows they're console transfers. So, when it comes down to it, yeah, I think that Noble has a lot to prove and they're going to do so. Enemy is a lot to prove. They, I mean, they pulled a Titanic last season. They were one of the teams that everybody talked about. They got to, they got, they got really deep in Worlds the year before. And then they come in. They're the biggest ship in the world. They're unsinkable. And they drive right into a fucking iceberg and never show up. This team, I have said, will probably be better in Season 4. They already look better in relegation. It all had to do with time off-season and making time to practice at the center of third. Mr. Mackey, I hope he's not their solo laner. I've heard rumors of Russian Poppy. I've heard rumors of a couple of different people. I don't actually know. Mr. Mackey is the one who played with them for, for relegation. But he tweeted out, Thank God I'm just a coach. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think that these teams are relatively evenly matched right now, and I think that will drastically change throughout the course of the season. I think that both of these teams have the capability to become a top four contender, and both of these teams have the capability to be a bottom four contender. Oh, F tough. There's only eight teams in the league. What I'm saying is one of these teams will get good, and one of these teams will get bad. Who will it be? I don't know. Who is Russian Poppy? I I don't really know. He's just some ranked dude. <laughs> just some ranked dude. Um, people keep asking me who, who Russian Poppy is. I, I honestly didn't hear of him until I heard the rumor. And then people are like, he's just some ranked player. PBM was just some ranked player once upon a time. Panda Cat was just some ranked player once upon a time. So there is, you know, who knows? Where did Marauder grow? I actually don't know. He quit, but I don't know why. In any event, I think that this one is a... This is one of the harder games to call this week. I I, I have to go with my heart. I got to say... If I went with my heart, I would say enemy, but I don't know who their, I don't know who their solo laner is. And because I have that much of a question, I'm not sure if I can really commit to enemy. I got to say Noble, because if, if Mr. Mackey is the solo laner for this team, Noble wins 2-0. So we'll see. Noble wins this 2-0 if Mr. Mackey is playing solo for enemy. If enemy have a different solo laner by then, then I think we have a little bit more of a contest. Perhaps a split, depending on who the solo laner is. Maybe even an enemy 2-0. I think that Chaos is so good. And I really like Pain and Panda. I think that dual lane is probably not the best dual lane in the world or anywhere close, but they're stronger than people give them credit for. So uh, I think right now this goes to Noble because they because enemy doesn't really have a dual lane or or a solo laner. Excuse me. Eager versus Sore Gaming. This might be my personal matchup to watch. In all honesty, 
mainly because I want to see Eager bring out the weirdness in Season 4, and if it's going to be good enough. Zapman Aurora, the best DJ in Divios, they didn't make a change, and I agree with that. Store Gaming did a lot. Vendim and Benji come over. Homie FA is going to be in the jungle, which pushes Andy to middle lane. And Jigs is the support. I am so interested in this sore lineup because I just don't know what's going to happen. Vettium and Benji, I have faith in this season. I have said a number of times that Vettium and Benji have a self-imposed ceiling that is high or low depending on how badly they want to play the game. And in the past, I think that the ceiling has been set rather low. But coming into season four, if you're going to be teaming with Jigs and Andinster, you better fucking want to play the game. Jigs and Andy are going to yell at you and make you feel bad if you don't care. And Vettium and Benji, like I said, historically they have done both. They have cared, they have not cared, and I think they care again. And because of that, they're going to be very scary. Vettium and Benji become very scary players when, they're, when their mind is 100% there. Jigs, my personal opinion, most mechanical guardian in the league. Homie F.A., love him. I love the dude. I love the way he plays. I love his attitude. He's got this can-do, try-hard attitude that people seem to make fun of. Not him specifically. But people seem to make fun of people that want to be good or try hard or, or pull out all the stops. And I think that's dumb. Homie F.A. has given a finger to all the haters and just said, No, I'm going to try my brains out every time I play this game. And I think that is excellent. Andy in the mid lane, man. Andy is one of the best players to ever touch Smite. Easily. It's not even like that hard. It's not even that hard to, to, to discuss. He's really good. Is he going to be as good in the middle lane? Will the shot call from jungle be missed? And I said this last week. I think if you look at other positions transitioning to other positions, you if the player... If I'm a solo laner and I'm this good and I switch to mid and I become this good, I think that the question is gone. It's lost. But for, for junglers, if you're a shot calling jungler and you're this strong and your mid becomes this strong or maybe even stronger, I will always question what if. If Soar lose a game on shot calling or jungling, not pointing a finger at homie F.A., I will always wonder what if Andy was jungling. Would the correct call be made? Would have the right gank, would the right gank have been performed? Would Anditster Jungle made a difference here, despite the fact that he's good enough at mid? That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> Homie's a ranked troll. Oh, I know. I lurk in homie FA's chat or stream more often than most other streamers, to be honest with you. I I, I sit there and I, I, I watch him do his thing, but <laughs> but we'll see. I, I when it comes down to his pro games, I think that he definitely uh is a different type of it's a different mentality. And I just he's always you know, I want to talk about the guy personally real quick. He's always just been a, a real genuine person. I think a lot of these pro players have been jaded or take what they have for granted sometimes. Not everybody and not all the time. But I think that sometimes you see these dudes come and they get a they get a free flight, a free hotel room, and they play their dope game in front of tens of thousands, if it worlds, hundreds of thousands worth of people, and they kind of take the experience for granted. Oh, I don't want to stream because I'd rather not stream. Oh, I don't want to do this because I'd rather not do that. Fuck, I don't like high res because they they don't give me a zillion bucks. I don't like it. And I, it's one thing to be negative. I, I'm not saying that you can't ever say anything negative about the league. It's one thing to be negative and it's another thing to be completely ungrateful. And I have never seen that type of attitude or even a glimpse of it from homie FA. 
And I, I think that's something to be celebrated. Does that impact his gameplay? No. But it's also important for me as a commentator. I love what I do. And part of what I do is I humanize these players. It's important for me that you see Steven Zappas, Maxwell Jackson, Jeremy Daly, Cody Tyson, and Nicholas Normeyer instead of Artemis, Fenrir, eh, Fen support, Hebo, Guan, and Robin. I think that who these guys are is just as important as what they do and who they play. And so... You'll always hear the negative stories because that's what drives clicks. You'll always hear, oh, oh, you know, and there's usually more of a fallout from it. Vedium not caring made him a worse player, and so I talked about it. Vedium caring makes him a better player, and I'm going to talk about that as well. But Homey F.A. being a good dude, I mean, what impact to the game does that have? Little to none. But it's important for me to tell you that that's who he is behind the scenes. That he's grateful for everything that anybody does for him. And he's always giving it his best. And I... I, I it's not something that's always going to be able to be talked about. And since I have the moment, I want y'all to know that Homie F.A. is a good dude. So... Sometimes a little positivity goes a long way. Especially on, on Valentine's Day. Speaking of which, Agro better be taking me to Waffle House. I ain't no cheap Valentine. I see you. I want to go to Waffle House with my Valentine. Gonna be too busy. Daniel J. Parnicus, man, it says. <laughs> so that covers us for the week. Let's recap right quick. Cyclone versus Team Dignitas, which is not the old Dignitas that you think of. It's Variety's new team. Variety's new team is going to smoke these guys. Valence Squadron will have 2-0 over Sanguine, but it will be closer than you might expect. Elevate versus Novus Orsa. I think this one is nice and even. I think this is one you can call a split. Energy versus Obey. I think Energy takes 2-0 right now. But later on in the future, I think that Obey Alliance might become better. It's all about how strong Maniac becomes. In memory of Gabe versus Team Allegiance, I think Gabe wins this 2-0. But I think there is a there is a potential for Allegiance to take a game because of the meta being more in favor of ALG. Creativity right now is very strong as the meta and the starts and all these strategies haven't landed down and they're not formed in concrete just yet. And of course, the openness of a solo lane. An open solo laner will always be better for Cyclone Spin. Allegiance, I think, in general, has a more creative approach to the game. And that's why they're going to steal a game off of In Memory of Gabe, one for one. Luminosity versus Flashpoint. Luminosity 2-0. If you need more of a discussion about that, I'm sorry. Noble versus Enemy. I think this one, again, is very close. We get to see a relegation rematch, which is fun. This is going to be a great episode. I think, I, I really and truly think Noble wind up taking this 2-0. Only because I don't know who Enemy Solo Laner is. Soar versus Eager. We just talked about that. I think Eager winds up. Uh, I think Eager winds up with a win over Soar, if not two, because of the same reason about Allegiance. Uh, the open ended, the open endedness of the season right now, I think, um, belongs to Team Eager, without a doubt. Sanctify. Sanctify. We didn't get to go to Waffle House. I said I wanted to go to Waffle House at like one in the like one thirty, but I I passed out. I went to sleep and Agro ended the stream at like three thirty, so I didn't get to go. He tried to take Taco, but Taco shut him down. So oh well. Uh, it, so Pidu, if Mister Mackey is the solo laner for Enemy, I th Noble wins that two zero. I have heard that Mister Mackey is a stand-in solo laner and will just be the coach, which I'd be a lot happier with. And I just don't know who the solo laner is, so. We'll see. Well, the name matchups always be on Sundays. No, we're looking for a longer... Here, we can actually show you. Uh, week two, for example. Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday will be our games. Uh, Thursday will be a mix, two and two. Two European games and then two uh, NA games. Saturday will be EU, and then Sunday will be North America. And, of course, Sunday will also be first period. Uh, first period will go from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'll never be casting these first games, and then I'll be able to cast the later on games. So... Don't forget, Sunday, first period at 10, all the way up until the right when those games start. And then we're going out. I've heard Russian Poppy as well. I was talking about that before. So, 
Should be relatively interesting. Uh, we'll see how these guys bang it out. I'm excited. Does anybody have any questions?